today's ends up any better. If not, I'm just gonna go ahead and record like at home, kind of like a shortened version of what we do in class for both the async and the um for you guys to go back and watch, okay? So today's like the last day for me to try to see what went on. What we did on Monday, if you weren't here, was we just kind of went through some GitHub and the, what the background was. And if you need some information, just let me know. Um, the one thing you were supposed to kind of look over was this excuse me. Do you have a moment? And uh, if you have the book to read through chapter one. So what I did, I also did put the PowerPoint slides from Monday up here. The PowerPoint slides from today are up here as well, but I also created this thing called Lecture 2 Handouts. And hopefully you guys can let me know if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I thought it would be good. These are kind of snippets off of the slides that I picked. So you can kind of print these out before class and not have to write down all this stuff. Does that make sense? You just take notes on it, okay? So this big chart is going to be in there. There's some, we're going to flow charting today. But some of the things that is even more important here, I have the code for the programs that we're going to go over in class today, okay? So instead of writing down every single line, if you print out these handouts, you'll have majority of it and you can just take note on it, okay? Or we don't have to print out the whole PowerPoint slides too, okay? So I'm going to try and do that for the lectures, for the handout. So if you see a handout, or I'll try to put it in the Discord. Hey, there's handouts, and I want to put them out before class. Because they may actually be a little better before class than after. Okay. Two handouts today. Like I had mine, I promise. So this one is a little plastic thing. Okay, this is a quick reference card. Okay. There's a lot more on here than what we're going to go through in this class, but take a minute and look through these as you do this class. Okay. I would keep this on you like at all times, especially when you're in lab. Okay. It's going to go through some of the structure, constants, flow, control, characters, what data types can you have? It's got a lot of great information on there. Like I said, we're not going to go through all of it, but it's a good Sponsored by what was left over in my home office that I found a little plastic container in South Florida. I really wanted to laminate them, but that's expensive. So y'all get sheet protectors that I found in my drawer. You're welcome. The second one is also a quick reference guide. There are a lot of things pulled out of this that you're going to see in these PowerPoints, okay, from lecture today, especially a lot of these charts and tables, okay. So please don't feel like you have to write down every single chart, every single table. A majority of them come from this quick reference guide. Okay, this one's also very good. It has examples and things like that as you go. Okay, so these are going to be references and resources for you moving forward for this class. Cool. They're also available up here. Quick reference, oops, quick quick reference guide and the reference card. So there are electronic copies if you want to go ahead and download them and keep them wherever you're putting your coding, okay? So you can have electronic, but I always find it easier in the lab because we only have a single monitor in there for you guys to have like this on the table and your code up on the monitor. You know, if you have dual monitors, you can do like a double thing, but we not that fancy around here. Okay, questions, comments, concerns, anything? So far, any questions from Monday? Negative? Okay. Downloads. I promise I opened the lecture. There we go. I'm sure from the beginning. Okay, one other thing. So I didn't see very many people signed up for lab. The last, you have to sign up 24 hours ahead of time. So tomorrow's 9 a.m. is, we're not going to have the 9 a.m. because no one signed up for it, okay? So I'm not going to come out here. Just saying. Um, we are going to be there at 1 o'clock today, 1 o'clock tomorrow, 1 o'clock on Friday. Okay? So if you signed up, you have preference over the computers. There's only eight in that room. Yeah, ma'am. 
yesterday. Um, they got to trade it against the world. Oh no, I'll look when after five. I saw it looked like you two signed up, but then it said it canceled it. I mean, did you change it? Rescheduled my okay, so it may have gotten confused. I'll take a look after five. I appreciate that, by the way. Um, okay. So if you did sign up, you will get one of the eight. If you didn't and you drop in, fingers crossed that they're still computers open. Does that make sense? Okay. Today, let me get on the right screen. There we go. So we're going to go through several different things today. And a lot of these are going to be your foundation basics for moving forward. Okay. Algorithms, pseudocode, and flowcharts. That right, those three topics right there are going to be the same regardless of what language you're programming in. Okay. So those are going to be our building blocks. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that and put it into C down here for like the second half of this class. Does that make sense? Okay. So does anyone know what an algorithm is? Set of steps used to solve a problem. Yeah, set of steps used to solve a problem. I want to do something. Okay, what am I going to do? Okay, let's create an algorithm. We're going to do a couple. Here, let's do step one. That is a crappy marker. Where's the trash? I'm not, I don't want to hit anybody in that thing. I'm going to throw it. Let's try another one. I'm going to go through four of these. Oh my Lord, have mercy. I'm gonna pull a few this time, just in case. Ah, look. Wake up, leave for class. Okay, what is the first thing, Xavier, picking on you? What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Open your eyes. Does anyone else do anything besides that? Okay. All right, what's the second thing you do after you open your eyes when you wake up? There are no wrong answers, right, y'all. What's the second thing? Well, yeah, after you wake, open your eyes, what do you do? Okay. Then what? Teeth. What's the next thing you do after you brush your teeth? What did you say? Oh, look for clothes. What? Get dressed. Pack your backpack. Oops, that's not a key. Okay. And what's the last thing you do? You leave. That's good. Okay, cool. Does anyone do anything else than this? Different than this? Yeah? I generally leave my bed before I use the bathroom. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Did you hear what he said? Uh huh. So let's see. Fifth does a pee in his bed. Get out of bed. Now I'm going to pick on some of the girls over there. Natalie, what do you do? Uh, before getting dressed, shower. Oh, we got a morning shower. Shower, shower, shower. <laughs> I'm an evening shower. Maria, what do you do? Is there anything that you do? Do you have like makeup or anything in here somewhere? No. I look at you. Me, me. Okay. There's a few things in here that I do. Let's see. Uh, right here, I hit snooze. Anyone else hit snooze? Yeah. I'm a snoozer. I have three alarms on my phone to wake up in the morning, like for real. Okay, so I usually hit snooze up here before I open my eyes. Like I know where that sucker is, and I just go, or I say Alexa snooze. Right? But you can see how 
We've got several different ways to get from waking up to leaving the room, right? To go to class or go wherever, right? Several different ways to get there. Several different algorithms that we can use to go from laying in bed to leaving the room for class, okay? Are any of them wrong? No. Okay. You're getting from point A to point B. Does it matter how you go? No. Okay. One thing I want to tell you in this class, especially when it comes to the actual writing of programs, there is not going to be a black and white correct and incorrect answer. Okay. There might be many different ways to get there but they all can be correct, okay? And it's gonna be based on whatever the instructions say, okay? Is there a difference if I say, do something if A is less than B, or if B is less, greater than A? Does that make sense? It's the same thing, right? But you can say it in two different ways. So you can program it, in many different ways, okay? So don't feel like you need to look at your partner or a friend and be like, oh my God, mine is nothing like that. They both can be correct, okay? The only time we have black and white is gonna be on something like, you know, our midterm and our final when it's like true and false questions, multiple choice, things like that. And that's mostly going on theory, vocabulary, things like that, okay? When you're writing your program, we're all different people. We're all going to do it differently. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Okay? So please do not feel like, especially, I always have this problem. After an assignment is done, someone is going to want, and I'll tell you who's going to be, going to be making, someone is going to want the answer to the lab. Am I wrong? Who goes, I don't know yet. Someone is going to want the answer on how to do the lab. Here's the thing, there's not a concrete answer, okay? I can give you the way that I would do it. Is that the way, that's the only way to do it? No, okay? So I don't typically post, here's the answer. It's not as easy as black and white as if it was like a math class, right? Okay, so don't typically post, here's the correct answer to this lab because there are multiple and many different programs, okay? If you would like me to sit down with you and get yours corrected so it's working correctly, we can do that, that's different. Make sense? Okay, so that's what our algorithms are gonna be, okay? Your algorithm is gonna be the steps on how to get from point A to point B and getting from that input to that output, okay? One of the first basic ways we're gonna do that is by using pseudocode. Okay. Pseudocode is writing down the steps in words on how to get from point A to point B. Okay. Our pseudocode for waking up and leaving the house or leaving the room in the morning is right here. Okay. So with our pseudocode, we are going to use appropriate naming conventions, and we're going to translate this into more of a programming world. Okay, I'm here in a second. We're going to use appropriate casings for methods, uppercase, lowercase. Okay. We are going to use structures. So if we're going to make a decision, we're going to use an if statement. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit more concrete than what we have here. What we're not going to do. Look, you're already taking pictures. I told you that they're in my handout. Do not write complete sentences. Do not write me a dissertation. We are not writing paragraphs when it comes to pseudocode. We are writing, wake up, open my eyes. I am not writing the mechanics of how the muscles in my face open my eyes in the morning, right? We are not going to make it so general that we can't understand what we want to do, okay? And we don't want to make it so abstract that it doesn't really mean anything. Okay. So 
our pseudocode is always going to start with a start. And it's always going to end with a stop. Four markers, that's two. This one would beat out my markers in the same Okay. Most of the time, you will have a few words to start. Input, output, calculate. Okay, when it comes to pseudocode. Okay. So say input number one, input number two. My sub equals number. I really should have made my variable names a lot shorter. Plus number two, output. That's pseudocode. Right? That pseudocode takes two numbers and add them together and creates a screen. Okay. This is going to be the same regardless of language. All you're doing is you're going through the thought process of what steps I have to take. Remember those three control statements. Sequential, which means you go step by step. You can make a decision or you can go in a loop. Okay, those are the only three things you can do. So you have to figure that out. This is laying out those steps before you even touch a keyboard. Okay. Half of this is figuring out the logic. The other half is actually programming this logic. Okay. It's not all 100% one or the other. Okay. Get rid of this. I got these like not the best idea I've had in a while. Cool. All right. It is 8 a.m. I'm awake, so that's all I gotta say. Okay. So to go along with our pseudocode, we are going to create flowcharts. Have you guys used flowcharts before? Maybe in science? Some people, yeah, some people know. Pro tip, your boss likes pictures and colors. I don't care who you are. Your boss likes pictures and colors. Flowcharts, okay. In a flow chart, we have this thing. It looks kind of like a hill. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like a squished circle. That's going to be your start and end. Your flow chart's always going to have one at the top, right? Like we have that pseudocode and one at the bottom. Those are rounded, I promise. Okay. Your input and or output is going to be a parallelogram. Is that what that thing is? Wrong, wrong. Input or output. If you're doing a process like a calculation, it's going to be a square. Okay. A connector, if you need to go between pages, your flow chart's so big, you got to go to another page, which leads to the connector. There are arrows to show you the direction. Okay. A decision is made with a rhombus, diamond looking thing. Okay. So, with what we did before, they typically have words in them too. Okay. So start and stop. What was the first thing we did? We did input a number. Number one. From my start, I'm going to go to number one. That's going to show my direction. Right. Next thing I did, I did an input of number two. Right. I'm showing direction. What did I do then? I added them. So what's adding? The process and one plus and two equals sum, right? Then what did I do? Outputted, outputted it, the sum. There's my flow chart that goes along with the pseudocode that I just wrote in the black that smoked all over the board. Okay, they mean the same thing. Okay, one's done graphically. The other one is done in more words. Okay. In your lab handout, there are examples 
of some labs that are going to help you do the one that you need to plan. I've also put with them the flow chart and the pseudocodes for all of them so you can get used to seeing it and seeing what it looks like and seeing how you're supposed to kind of deal with that. Okay. Because this, let's not try this one this time. This is going to turn into your program. Each one of these symbols is going to be a command or a step in your program. Okay. That's how you get the logic. Oh, look at that one. That one is much better. That's how you get the logic going before you touch the keyboard. Okay. Questions so far? Negative? Okay. Okay. So here, let's do this. Develop a pseudocode and a flowchart to ask the user to enter in the voltage and the current and calculate and display the resistance. And there's the equation. Don't care. What's the first thing we do for pseudocode? Oh. Yeah, first we gotta do something, right? First we gotta start. Okay. What's the first thing I do? Ask the user to input what? Voltage and current. Yeah. Then what do we do? Calculate the resistance. Display resistance. Output. Then what do I do? End or stop. That's it. Don't put your fine card there, Nova. Okay? When I read this, I saw some scary books, right? You take this word by word, it tells me. Ask the user to enter the voltage and current. That whole sentence is this right here. Make sense? Calculate and display. Calculate, display. Okay. And we're done. Okay. So, what does this flow chart look like? So, I can look at my pseudocode. I can put my little pill here because I don't know what else to call it. Input V and I, right? What's the calculate? What shape? Rectangle. Rectangle. R equals V over I. And then I'm going to output out R. Does that make sense? Yeah. And like I said, this is going to be the same in every single language. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because all we're doing here, here I'm going to put up the actual. All we're doing is laying out the algorithm. That's all we're doing. Okay. You can see here. They like got fancy on us. They put like a prompt out there for the user and stuff like that. Two ways or both right. Okay. Is the one that I wrote here any more right or more wrong than this one? No. Okay. Make sense? Okay. So let's go back into our C. Okay. Our C programming language. Number one above all, C programming language is case sensitive. Okay. And we'll get back into this when we go for variables. But if I write a variable as n u m is not going to be equal to capital N u m, okay? The case makes it different. Make sense? Okay. That's something that will get you tricked up. C also ignores all blank space, white space. When I say that. I mean, blank lines, spaces, tabs, completely ignores all that, doesn't care. Okay. It's going to be used to make your program easier to read. Okay. White space is for the humans, not the computer. The computer doesn't care. Okay. 
okay? The way that we tell the compiler that we are done with a command is with a semicolon. And that sucker is going to bite you in the butt every time, okay? One of the most popular errors you will see as you compile is a missing semicolon. I can promise you, I still get missing semicolons. You're typing away and you just say enter. You forget that semicolon, it will yell, okay? It uses preprocessors to load the C standard libraries. Remember, we talked about those C standard libraries of things that are out there that we go ahead and use, right? The way that we do that is there's this thing called a hashtag include, okay? It is always going to be the first line or set of lines of your code. Because the first thing you have to do is tell the computer, hey, by the way, I'm going to go use this. You might want to go get it, okay? The biggest one we're going to use, and it's in the pointy brackets. I don't know what you call these suckers. The little, you know what I'm talking about, the little arrowy looking things, is stdio.h. It is not studio. Ask me how I know, okay? Standard STD input output STD IO. Literally recording that video that I showed you guys this morning. I could not get my program to compile. It was literally like a one line print. My brain type studio. Okay. But it stands for standard input output. Okay. That's going to allow us to do things like print X, and it's going to know to go put it on the screen. Okay, we don't have to go down to that level and say, find the screen, find the connection to the screen. That studio or the standard IO is going to do it for us. Okay. In C, every program is going to have a main function. That is what the compiler looks at, and that's where it's going to start. And it's main with a lowercase m. Okay, we're gonna talk about that one here a little bit more in a second. Your main function main is lowercase, and it is followed by what we call a block of code. Okay, so typically you will have something main in lowercase, or something else. Okay, we'll talk about those in just a second. Then we'll have an open curly bracket to tell the computer we're getting ready to give you commands. This is the start of my program. And then we're going to have a closing curly bracket after we're done with everything. Okay. So what's in there is we call a block. Your block starts with a curly bracket, ends with a curly bracket. Okay. Your main can take information in and it can also return information. So in here, you're going to put a return type and an input type. For this class, the majority of it, we're going to say void, void. Y'all know what the word void means. Void means nothing, right? So we're not returning anything. We don't expect anything to start this program. Void, void. Okay. But just know, God bless you, that you do have the ability to send it some arguments and it can also return something. Okay. Oops. Oh, there we go, look. So for here, I'm returning nothing, I'm expecting nothing, okay? I'm, it, I'm going to return you an int, but I'm expecting nothing, okay? I'm returning an int and I expect you to send me an int before I start, okay? So just a few different examples. For the most part, we're staying in the void void realm of the world. Yeah? Okay. Let's see what else I have. Okay. Our first little clipper. What do y'all what do y'all see? Anything good? What do y'all see up there? Anything that looks interesting? Yeah. What do you see? Do what? Say that again, I'm sorry. 
Yes. Yeah. We're printing. I'm like covered in marker. We're printing a message to the screen, right? What else that I've already talked about? We're we're indicating the program that we're gonna use. Yeah. What's that thing right there? Did we talk about what a double hashtag is? It's like a comment. It's a comment. Okay. There are two ways to make a comment in C. You have a single line comment and you have a multi line comment. Okay. The double hash is a single. Okay. To do a multi line, it's hash star, whatever comment you want, and then star slash. And that ends your comment. Okay. Commenting is very important. Commenting is for the programmer only. The computer completely ignores it. Okay. If you were to pick this up, function name begins program execution. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. Again, what I said from Monday, our programs here, especially during the first half, are going to be very, very small, right? I mean, I started on line three and I'm, there's only like four lines, right? When you're dealing with hundreds of lines of code, something like end function main is very important. You need to know which one of these little curly brackets goes to what. Okay. At the top, and this will be something we work on in lab, at the very top of every program, I want you guys to put what we're going to call a header. I don't care if you do it in a single line or a double line, but you need to put your name. And you need to put the assignment number and then CS one time. Okay, so I know and you know what it is, where it's from, etc. Okay, those are gonna be at the top of everything. It can be before your include. Okay, your include needs to be the very first line of executable code. I can put white space before it and I can put comments before it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Here's my main print F. Print F is what we're going to use to print to the screen. Okay. Very, very simple. Print F parenthesis. What you want to print in quotes. That's it. Okay. So what is this going to, that's the icky one. What's this going to print to the screen? Welcome to C. Welcome to C. That's what's gonna be in your output on this one. Nope, wrong button. No, I thought I put the output on there. Okay. So. Went the wrong way. Okay. One last thing to see in this. Here, after it says welcome to see, there's this slash, right? That slash indicates that what comes after it is a character that is going to do something rather than print something. Okay. A slash n is going to be a return or a new line. Okay. You see how it's going to do something rather than print something? Okay. There are several of these. And feel free to play with them in lab. That's what lab's for. Okay. So, oh, that's a little small. Slash a. It's going to be a bell. It's going to ding. Okay, backspace, new line, pair return, tab. Okay, this is how you're going to format some of those strings. Okay, if you want to put, so we do print F, right? What if I want to print quote? What's going to happen? Say I want to quote here. 
quote things, but that's the end of it, right? So how do I put a quote? Double quote? Well, I put the slash. Okay, the slash is going to designate that this is, I want you to print a quote. It's not actually the quote for the end of this string. Okay. So take a look at this table. You can do several different things. And again, it's not necessarily going to print that character. It's going to give the kind of like a command to do something. Okay. So for example, maybe, oh, it is like working on the wrong thing here. Look at that. There we go. Okay. If I say print add welcome space to C slash, what is this going to print? Well, I guess it's going to press print welcome, right? And the space. Where is this going to go? Do what? Below the welcome. Anyone else? Same line as the welcome. Okay, we've got two choices. Which one do you think? You say below? Okay. Okay, how many people say below? Yeah, I got a whole lot of people not making the decision. How many people think on the same line? Okay. It is the same line. Because I did not tell it to do a carriage return on the screen yet. So this right here does not automatically go to the next line. Okay, it's going to go to the next line when I tell it to. Does that make sense? Okay, another thing that'll trip you up, promise. So, what is this one going to print? It's going to print welcome, right? What does that do? Next line. Right? Y'all with me? What's that gonna do? See that? Yeah? Okay. I'm gonna show you guys again. Remember when I said there's not one way to do something? We just printed the same thing to the screen in three different programs that did the same thing. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Pay attention to your slashies. Okay. Okay. Next. Variables. So now we've just printed plain old text. Nothing crazy. Part A of lab is to print text to the screen, which is what we did. Okay. Variables. Variables in programming are similar to variables when you use in algebra, right? Y equals MX plus Z, right? Those are all variables. It means the same thing. But in programming, a variable is basically a memory storage location where you're going to put something. You may not know what that something is, which is why you want to give it a variable name. Okay? Types of variables you can have numbers, you can have characters, you can have a Boolean. Do you know what a Boolean is? True and false, really. Yeah, true and false. Okay. But I can have a character, so I can say, I can have a variable called name. Okay. And it, it could be equal to Caroline University. It's a character, right? A variable reserves a location in memory to be used later on in the program. Okay. Biggest difference between algebra and programming. Okay. But the concept's the same. Okay. Variable types, okay? For the first week or so, and I think most of these charts are in one of either the uh, the bookish handout. For the most part, we are going to be using int for now. We might use some doubles, okay? An int is an integer, okay? No decimal, whole number, okay? A double is a decimal. So if I want to use pi 3.14, I need to use a double because there's a decimal point. Does that make sense? Int. Negative or positive, whole number. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Some of the other ones that we'll use later on is a character, which 
refers to a single something. Okay. So it might be an A, like a single A. It might be that return symbol, but it's like a single entity. Okay. Usually letter. And I'm going to die. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the difference between a sign and unsigned? Okay. So sign and unsigned. Unsigned is positive numbers only. Okay. Sign means you have negative and positive. Okay. And some of the differences between things like um, like a short int and a regular int. See, a short is an eight bit int. We talked about bits. Whereas a regular int gives you 16. So an eight bit will only give you from negative 128 to 127. Whereas a regular, which is a 16, it's a 32,000 to 32,000. Okay, so it's a bigger number. Okay. For this class, we are not going to be concerned very much with memory management. Okay. So we're probably just going to use ints and doubles and pairs, and that's about it. Okay. We're not going to say, okay, well, this number is never going to exceed the number 10. It's going to be zero through 10. So I need to make it um, an unsigned short. We're not going to go that far into memory management. Okay. We're just going to go easy on the programming part. Make sense? Okay. I just want to let you guys know that there are way more types out there than what we're going to know. Okay. These are our rules, our commandments for variables. Number one, it has to be unique to the program. Okay. You cannot have two variables called name in the same program. Okay. You can have name one and name two. You can have first name and last name, but you can't have name and name. It won't know which is which. Okay. Descriptive names, easily understandable and maintainable, okay? This right here, you guys, is going to separate your amateurs from your professionals. I'll tell you that right now, okay? Most of the time, professionals will use descriptive names. This one right here is more of a rule of thumb, but it is important, okay? Usually, we only use things like I, X, Y, a, if it makes sense, or B, if it's a counter, and we'll talk about counters later, okay? But otherwise, we want to use descriptive names that actually say what's in there, okay? Or something that makes sense. Your variable names can contain letters, numbers, and an underscore. That is it, okay? No question marks, no asterisks, no hashtags, okay? Letters, digits, and underscores, that's it. Okay, they must begin with a letter or an underscore. You cannot begin it with a number. Okay, so you need number one, number underscore one, underscore number one, but not one number. Okay, again, we're case sensitive, right? My there and my there, two different variables. Okay. Names cannot contain white space or special characters. So there, there we go with exclamation points and no spaces. Okay. So if it's going to be first name, it cannot be first name. It must be first underscore name or first capital name. Or you can just squish it together. Okay. All of those are valid. Okay, the one where I took that out, not valid anymore. Okay. No reserved words. I'm going to put a list of reserved words there in that handout that I gave you. Okay. A reserved word or words that C already has given something to, so it's a command of some sort. Like that word include we used can't be a variable name. Make sense? Okay. Another rule of thumb that goes along with this one variables will be lowercase. They will start with a lowercase. So I'm going to put here lowercase. Okay. Again, that's going to separate your amateurs from your professionals. Your professionals will know that capital letters have been reserved for object-oriented programming and for object-oriented classes. Okay. That's how you can tell a class. We're not doing object-oriented. 
So our main is going to be lowercase, and all of your variables should be lowercase. Is it going to work if it's uppercase? Yes, but it's going to show that you're a little bit of an amateur. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions on rules for variables? Okay. Cool. Either you guys are asleep. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, sir. Why, yes, Nathan, I can. Here are some reserved words. Thank you. That was great. Okay. This, again, that came from the handout, the multi page handout. Okay. Cannot be used for variables or function names. They're reserved in C because they do something special. Okay. Case, care. We said that was a data type, right? We said a care and an int. Here's int. I cannot have a variable called int because in C, int is something very special. It is a data type, it is an integer. Okay. Things like if. Right? Because if is gonna, as we're gonna see in a minute, is gonna be our decision making word. Okay. Yes, sir. So these are really like specific to the language. These are specific to the language you're using, yes. Yes. To be honest, they're pretty universal, but they are specific. So for C++, they'll be the same because it's based on C, right? I believe Python's are pretty similar as well because it's kind of based on C, okay? If you go and look into like assembly language, I mean, also, and it can be completely different, okay? So it is based on the language, but for the most part, they're all kind of connected. That was a good question. Okay. So using variables, how do we use them? You have to do two steps before you use it. So I guess three, your third step is to use it, right? First step, you have to do something called declare the variable. You're going to indicate what the variable is holding and give it a name. Okay. Then you're going to initialize it, like giving it an initial value. Okay. Let me explain. Declare the variable. Give me a variable name. Name. Perfect. Okay. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my program that I'm going to have, let's make it an integer just because I want to be weird. I'm going to have an integer and I'm going to call it name. Remember what I said a variable is. It is a memory location in the computer, right? When this gets run, it is going to go into the memory, find a chunk of memory big enough to fit an integer, right? Because remember that table, 8 bits, 16, 32, remember that table? Go find that many chunks and say, that's going to be me. Okay? That's this first part. What it's called, what it's holding. Okay, the second part. This part right here is a little iffy. You can get away with not doing it, but here, let me explain. Y'all listen and watch like true crime podcasts or movies or all that stuff, right? You know, nothing's ever actually deleted from your hard drive, right? Can we go there? Okay. When I am done with this program and it releases this memory, does it wipe it clean? No. It just says you can reuse this at some other time, right? If I go and get this chunk of memory, and for some reason, there's the number 186 in it left over from God only knows what, right? And then I say name plus four, right? What's that going to be? Right? What if I thought, if I didn't say anything and I thought name was zero, I would think that it would be four. So it's going to give me a different answer. The only way that I can be absolutely positive that I know what's in there is to tell it what to put in there. Does that make sense? Okay. Again, sometimes you can get away with not doing it because sometimes you get lucky and it's blank. Okay. But it's not a guarantee. Okay. So it's something we want to make sure. So initialize the variable. 
since I am going to say it's going to be zero, I'm going to say name is going to be equal to zero. I know exactly what's in there now, and there's going to be no surprises. Okay, so the two things you have to do, declare, initialize. Two different ways you can do it. Okay, oops, there we go. Okay, it's exactly what I just did up there, right? You can also do it all on one line. Okay, so I can say int name equals zero. Like here, int integer one equals one, int integer two equals six. This is doing both steps at the same time. They're both okay. They're both correct. You may have a reason why you want to do one or the other. Does it matter? No. Okay. Both are correct. Again, we're going back to not, there's not a solid answer for every single thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Next. Oh, man, I did it again. Tech boy, please, like, change this sucker next time y'all are at work. Because... This is annoying. <laughs> okay. So now we've got print. We can print strings. What if we want to print a variable? Okay. What we have to do is we have to tell the print statement that we're going to put a variable in there. Okay. The whole purpose for a variable is that you don't know what's going to be in it, right? So you don't know what it's going to be. So before we had hello, and it was just a text, right? This is inside my print up. Okay. If I want to put a variable in there, I have to put what they call a format specifier. And again, this table is in that handout. Okay. Right now, we're going to be doing int, which for some ungodly reason is a D. How do I get D out of int? Okay. So, what I want to do. Hello. Oh, that's a big O. Percent D. Okay. After that. Okay. I'm not going to put that in parentheses yet. Okay. I'm going to actually put a comma and I'm going to put the variable name. So then I can end it. Okay. So you have to put that format identifier into that string to say, hey, I'm going to put a variable in there. After the string is ended, put a comma and then list the variables. Okay. You also list them going from left to right. So if I say percent D, percent D, percent D, number one, number two, no, nope, that isn't an end, I promise. Okay. One. Two, three. Make sense? You're going to go left to right. You want to put more than one in one set in one statement. Okay. Here, F is a float, C is a care. Okay. It also gives you some syntax on what it looks like. So print F, percent D, put the variable name. Okay. So that's how we're going to print variables. Using the same exact thing to print F, we're just going to put that. Format specifier. Okay. And the rest of this is fairly intuitive. If we want to do some maths with some numbers, what time is it? 8.57. Not about 9.57. Hmm. Add 5 multiplied by. Okay. Plus, minus, asterisk, star, multiply, divide, divide symbol. Okay. We also have some things here. Percent sign. It's going to give you the remainder on a division as an integer. Okay. We've got some, a single plus sign and a minus sign are going to be the sign of the number. A double plus adds, adds one and a double minus subtracts one. 
Okay. Again, these tables are in those handouts. So those are pretty basic. So here, my example. Notice line seven and eight. I declared my variable and I gave it an initial value. I set them equal to what I think they are. Okay. Line not 10 down here does the same exact thing. So I've got three variables, right? What do I have? Integer one, integer two, and sum. Right? Sum equals zero. Integer one is one, integer two is six. Okay. Notice my comments telling you what's going on. Okay. Line 11, sum equals integer one plus integer two, semicolon. Pretty easy stuff, right? Plus, minus. Notice my print on line 13. What do we see there? The percent B, right? The comma and then the sum. That's going to print the sum onto the screen. Okay. This right here is very, very similar to one of the lines as well. Okay. I think part B. I think part B says there's like three numbers and it's like, add them and give me the average or something like that. Okay, super simple. Questions on this, printing variables, mathy stuff. No, okay. The last thing we're gonna talk about today are decisions. Okay, remember control. We've been through sequential pretty much most of the stuff in now, right? You do one, two, three, four, step by step. Now we're gonna make some decisions, okay? In order to make a decision, I have to do some kind of comparison, right? That's your decision that you're making, okay? If I wanna know if something is equal to something else, it is a double equal sign. What's a single? Yeah, you're assigning a number to a variable, okay? So a single is an assignment, a double is a comparison, okay? Is three equal to three, right? Not equal. You might wanna know if something's not the same. Exclamation point equal sign, okay? Not, not equal, okay? Greater than or less than, we're using our alligators. Y'all learn that way? Okay, cool. If not, you can ask me later. I still think about alligators, it's fine. Greater than and or equal to or less than or equal to. We're gonna use your alligator, it's just how you say it. Greater than, equal to. Less than, equal to, okay? So it's the two symbols put together, okay? That's how we're gonna do our comparisons. Yeah? Okay. The way we do a comparison, let's see, and in most languages, we use something called an if. Okay, or an if else. Okay, doesn't always need to have the else. If something is true, something's gonna happen. Otherwise, do something else. Make sense? Okay, for example, if move x is equal to, remember double one, x is x plus 20, otherwise, y is y minus 10. Okay, you don't need the else. Okay. If one equals one, print one equals one, then you can move on. You don't need an otherwise something else, okay? If something, do something, okay? And if you want a second option else, do something else. Pretty straightforward, okay? The third part of the lab is doing something with an if, okay? This is a small snippet of a much larger program, but here they did some input. We're not doing using, that's not a word. We're not doing user input until next Wednesday. So we'll look at it a little bit more, but so I'm gonna assign number one equal to zero, number two equal to zero, okay? Got a few ifs up there, okay? So if I have zero, zero, if number one double equal sign number two, is that true? Is this equal to that? Yes. So it's going to print number one is equal to number two. See how we have the two format identifiers and the two variables there? So that's 
going to print zero is equal to zero. Right? Can it come down here? If number one is not equal to number two, is that true? Is zero not equal to zero? No. Does it do that then? No, it just skips it. Okay. It only does what's in the bracket if it's true. Otherwise, it just skips it entirely. Okay. So come down here. If number one is less than number two, is, is zero less than zero? No. So it's going to skip that as well. Make sense? So what if I have three and eight? Okay. Is number one equal to number two? No. So we're not even going to do that. We're not going to look at it. Right? Is number one not equal to number two? Correct. So three is not equal to eight. Okay. If number one is less than number two, is that true or false? True. So it's also going to print three is less than eight. Okay. New line. You see that? Okay. If I were to come up here, so let's say let's let's switch it. Let's do five and two. Is one equal to two? If it's five and two in the blue, no. Are they not equal? Wait, I thought someone said no. Five is not equal to two, right? Is number one less than number two? No. See how that works? Okay. Yes, sir. Ah, good question. If you want to prioritize one over the other, so say, I want to do this, this, or this, right? That's when you put that else in there. Okay. So if I say, okay, else if, let's go back to my green, my three and my eight. Okay. Actually, yeah, let's do that one because this was it in green. Okay. If I put the else, are the numbers equal? No. Else. Are they not equal? Yes. So it does this. So it does three is not equal to eight. Because you have the word else, it goes to the end of the else's. Okay. We're not getting that far in lab this week, but that's just to answer your question. I have a question. Yes. If you remove the else, in the twenty, yeah, in the twenty third line. Yep. It goes after that else is. It goes to the else. Go there. Mm -hmm. The else's will connect it back to what whatever was first. Okay, makes sense. Okay, if it doesn't make sense, that's fine too. Yeah, and like I said, that was a little bit. Does that? Do we see how that works? Okay. Let's see what else I got. <laughs> I thought that was it. Okay. Did I did I make your brains hurt today? Silence a yes or a no. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, in the lab, and we jumped a little bit between chapters two and three if you have the book. Okay, so just know that. And we're gonna do a little bit more on one day or something, okay? But for the lab, there's a printout for the lab. Okay. When you open up lab two, there's an attachment. In that, there are three labs to walk through. Okay. It literally says type this in and one. Okay. Those three labs are going to give you what you need to do the three that you're supposed to hand in. Okay. 
And by free that handed, I mean the first one prints a string, the second one does a calculation, I think I could use a sum and an average and print them. And then the third one does some kind of if decision. Okay. So they, they build on each other. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns about what we did today or from Monday. Okay. Do not show up on Monday. I will not be here. It is a federal holiday. I'm taking the day off. I don't know if any other professor is. I don't really care, but I am. Because it's all about me. Okay. So please do not do something like, well, Professor Gentry said that we have no class on Monday. No, we have no class for this class. Okay. Verify with everyone else. Okay. Lab time for this week. Get those three labs done. I will be in there. I'll talk to you guys about tomorrow morning. Um, definitely, I will be in the lab at one o'clock. It's not the blue lab, it's the white lab across the hall. Okay. Tomorrow at one o'clock, Friday at one o'clock. Okay. Next Wednesday, we're going to start looking at user input. Okay. So, allowing the user to type in some feedback. The control, we're going to continue all of our control structures, which are those three things, right? We did sequential. We kind of started in decisions. We're going to go with some switches, which is a decision. And we're going to go into a while, which is a loop. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about nesting, which is taking those control structures and putting them within each other and around each other to do what it needs them to do. And we're going to go through a case study on Wednesday from start to finish with a statement of work, pseudocode, coding, and then we're going to write the program. Yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns? Insults will be for later because I have not had enough coffee for that day. Negative. Okay, ladies and gents, I will see you on Wednesday.